Aloha, all, and welcome back to Let's Play The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. I'm Paper Mario Guy, and this is episode 69. So, in the last episode, we pretty much finished the majority, uh, if not, you know, like 99% of the kid's dungeon. Now we only have one more thing to do. And he's right there. Ooh, this big guy himself, so let's go wake him up. Everybody likes to be waken, woken up by, uh, you know, a good hearty sword swipe. So, this is an iron knuckle. Oh my god, and he does a lot of damage. Um, uh, he does... He does more damage than you really think that he would. Um, so, you kind of want to be careful when you're fighting him. But the basically, the strategy that I like to fight with him, that most people like, is, you know, have him slice the ground, back up, and then, um do a jump slash, and it takes quick, uh, quick, makes quick work for him, um, and he's, he's really a pushover, I mean, he does a lot of damage, so if you actually get hit by him, you're, yeah, you're, you're in for a world of hurt, but, um, the thing is, if you get hurt, uh, don't be, you know, don't get scared by the amount of damage he does, just lure him over to one of those pillars, and as you saw, uh, when you break the pillar, um, it actually, uh, uh, gives you some hearts. So let's make him break that, grab some more hearts. And, oh! And, man. Oh, that was stupid. That's, that's me getting a little cocky right there. Oh, what am I doing? What am I doing? I'm getting so nervous. The iron, I just got stunned saying that the iron knuckle's kind of a pushover. And he really is, you know, he, you know, his battle pattern is pretty predictable, he really only does two moves, and he's already done. So, we, uh, woke him up with a sword slash, and we killed him with a sword slash, so go figure. Um, but now that this room is done, we have a glorious cutscene, and a glorious, uh... Wait, what, what are you doing here? Oh my god, you flew away. I called you a bitch, and you flew away. I thought we were done. <sighs> of course, you know, it's not, not anything for me. I'm the hero of time. You are just so stupid. Not even a beard hat could make you amazing. You are dumb. From now on, the future of all people in Hyrule is on your shoulders. Really, because it hasn't been for the, you know, the, the first half of the game, or first, what, 75% of the game. So, two witches inhabit this temple, and in order to destroy them, turn their own magic power against them. Hoot hoot! Uh, I'm not falling for this dirty old trick, you bitch. So, um, Kabora Gabora is going to continue to be a perv, continue to creep on us. And, uh, wow, I'm glad that it's nighttime for this cutscene that's gonna be coming up. Because it's so much more epic when it's nighttime than daytime. Unless it switches, and then I just forgot. You got the silver gauntlets! And that's not really good for singing. But if you wore them, you would feel power in your arms, the power to lift big things with. A. But these gauntlets won't fit a kid. Plus, you promised to give them to Nabooru. You should keep your word. Oh, in the dust. Yes, yes. Magic? Ganondorf? Ganondorf Black Magic? I didn't know Ganondorf... Yeah, no, actually, I could see Ganondorf listening to, you know, some Slayer. Black Magic. Or maybe, maybe, maybe Ganondorf isn't the heavy type of guy. Maybe that was, you know... He calls it Black Magic because his favorite song is Black Magic Woman. I don't know. I don't know. I could totally picture seeing, uh, picture Ganondorf, uh, listening to Slayer, though. He just seems like that type of guy. But anyway, um, the brewer was gone. <laughs> 
Um, so, you know, normally I'd mourn her death, but we have the silver gauntlets all to ourselves now, so sweet. Um, so, basically, now we're in the final stretch, um, and the only thing we have left to do is the spirit temple as the adult, so I'm going to go to, uh, you know, the temple of time, transfer to an adult, and then, uh, meet you back. So, until then, um, bye.